Yeah, and in fact, according to a close, very a source close to this investigation, what really tipped it for them was they were able to do interviews and develop information that Markeith Lloyd was known to hang out at certain hotels in this area. Then armed with that information, we understand from investigators that they have been reviewing reams of footage until they hit on something very important, and that was footage of a person they thought was Markeith Lloyd coming and going from a particular hotel or hotels. Then they were able to actually get the tag number of vehicles associated with the folks he was traveling with. And then armed with that information, they were able to further uh, boil this down to this abandoned house where they finally took him into custody. And interestingly, according to this source who was there tonight, they said they didn't just go kick down the door. First, they made sure to get it completely surrounded. So as you heard Police Chief Meaner say, when Lloyd tried to get out the back door allegedly and run away, he was stopped there, went back inside, eventually crawled out as we understand it, and was taken into custody. And at the time, he was put into those handcuffs that belonged to Sergeant Deborah Clayton. All of these officers, as you mentioned, who've been living this case day to day for the better part of a week now, many of them actually burst into tears. So that gives you a sense of this quote unquote good old fashioned police work that ended in this monumental arrest tonight. Let's go back to you. And yeah, Bob, before you go, uh, both the chief and the sheriff at the news conference tonight talked about how it was multiple agencies working together and, and each one kind of bringing a unique set of skills to the table that eventually led to Lloyd being arrested. Yeah, and no doubt about that, Jim. And what they were also able to do is they were sitting off this house. We understand that they had a good feeling about it for several hours, but when Lloyd actually used some sort of electronic equipment, we understand possibly a phone, uh, that that's where they were able to pinpoint him via some of their sophisticated electronic surveillance. That's what gave them the assurance that he was inside there, and thankfully they were able to bring this to a successful conclusion without their fears being realized that somebody else or other persons might end up being killed in some sort of bloodbath. So this is one of the best outcomes they could have hoped for. And Bob, just a twist hearing tonight in that news conference that uh, Deputy Deborah Clayton's mother lived right or lives right around the house from that home in Carver Shores. Yeah, and that's a really interesting point in all of this, that there's going to be some soul searching in that neighborhood. This is also a, a, an area that Markeith Lloyd is very familiar with. So uh, sources are not surprised that he was arrested over in that West Orlando area, but still it has to be a disappointing feeling for them. And you heard him touch on that, this bittersweet notion that here in this very neighborhood where Sergeant Clayton had such deep roots that someone could harbor him in this abandoned house that uh, had to belong to someone and i think the key to the ownership of that house as well where he was captured uh, is going to be very interesting as sources telling us they do anticipate further arrests in the wake of this perhaps some people who they can prove were harboring him all right, Bob, thanks so much tonight at OPG headquarters. And now we head to Carver Shores. In that location, as we were saying, Mark Keith Lloyd, that was his home area, knew most of the residents there. But just kind of a, a stunning fact, knowing that Lieutenant Deborah Clayton's mother's house right around the corner. So as Bob said, that's just something that that community will in the next few days have to deal with and, and the folks that may have known that he was in the whereabouts. Yeah.